right. Hey everybody. It is Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. My name is Marissa. I go by mkissa or mkissa creations on Instagram and I want to welcome you to my floss tube video. This is floss tube number nine for me. Um, Life is life right now. Uh, we just started homeschool for our kindergartner, so that's been fun. Um, kindergarten's pretty easy. Um, we're counting ourselves pretty lucky. Um, it made it a very easy decision to keep her home from school. They are offering um, partial attendance or complete virtual. But because I work in the service industry, I have Tuesdays and Wednesdays as my weekend. So we decided that as a family, we would rather take on a full-blown homeschool aspect to it so that she and I could have the same weekends and our family time would be family time. I am finding that um, in the we're kind of going the more traditional homeschool route, which isn't necessarily like sitting down and doing worksheets and all that stuff, but more of like learning through experiences and learning through play and things like that. And so she is doing more of her schoolwork when I'm home because we're going to the dairy farm and seeing the cows and uh, we are going through her piggy bank and rolling her coins for math that day. and doing things like that, um, so that's stuff that we're doing together, but it's also not like, I don't know. It's just, we're so lucky we have a kindergartner. Um, but my warmest thoughts to all the parents that are dealing with distance learning and partial distance learning and kids that are doing math that you don't understand and just all the things that are happening right now. I um, do not envy you, um, but also you can do this. Everybody can do this. It is small sacrifices and moments of giving stuff up that is yours and what you're used to for the better of everybody. So off my soapbox for that, but um, just keep moving forward. We are, we're going to get to a better place and it's gonna be good. I have been stitching a lot. I've been designing, I've been stitching my designs, I've been stitching other things. I've been trying really hard to kind of pick a project and like put a decent amount of stitches in that each day. So uh, I'm gonna talk about plans till the end but I guess I'll talk about my plans right now. So right now my plans are to at least stitch one strand of silk into my log dog samplers the token because that is my and my husband's like anniversary slash wedding piece and we got married in september actually our anniversary is tomorrow we're celebrating nine years nine years is pottery so i got my husband a um, tiki mug a geek tinky mug he doesn't know about it yet it is a 40th anniversary Empire Strikes Back tiki mug, and it's like an at, at that's like fallen down. It's a like scorpion bowl. It holds 40 ounces. I think we actually might end up using it as a planter. I don't know, but it's pottery, so I feel like that was a pretty good tie-in to things that we actually like have for an anniversary present. It was like a special pre-order thing, so it's not going to be here for think like three more weeks so uh, tomorrow he'll get a <laughs> picture of it this is what I got you <laughs> um, in our house present giving happens like that either it's offered to you not my husband's house my house <laughs> his family is really good about presents I'm my sisters and I are not good at presents and we're like oh I bought this for you for Christmas but you can have it now kind of thing so or it's like um it's actually coming late because I either pre-ordered we're trying we try to support artists because we're a creative family so it'll usually be like I pre-ordered this thing from an artist but it's not coming out for like six more weeks but that's what I got you <laughs> or um yeah oh it's there now you can just open it 
So we're like on both ends. It's like two weeks early or like three weeks late, but we try to make sure that we get stuff for people that they like and that they want to have, which is super important. Um, we try not to be wasteful and we try to buy a lot of like artwork nowadays, like things that are also art. Um, just really want to support that world and the world that I'm in and the reason I do this. Okay. Rambly rambles are over. I've been stitching a lot. What have I been stitching on? So before I switched, so it's been three weeks because life was happening and on my two days off things were happening and I wasn't able to like sit down and do this in quiet time with the two small kids and talk a lot with my hands. Hi. Um, <laughs> so I've been stitching. So I, when I first started my like, I'm going to put at least one strand into the same project um, every day before I stitch on either continue stitching on that or stitch on something else that I have like more of a pull to stitch. I've been stitching on um, what is my second oldest whip next to a Hade, which is um, Ocean ABCs. It's by Design Works. This is the cover page. The cover, so these were available in Joann's. I got this at Joann's, which it was like MSRP $27.99, which is I think sort of similar to like what you can find this online at right now. And it's like now $13.99. And I also know for a fact that I bought it with like a 40% off coupon. So I think I paid probably like $9 for this pattern. And it came with Kit Ada, which is stiff and kind of awful, but I'm using it and it's just fine. And the stitch is so cute that it doesn't matter. But holy cow, like the picture on here does not do the actual threads justice. So like the dividing lines between everything looks kind of like this um, really muted sea foam on the cover. And it's like a very bright, uh, more like an aqua. So you have obviously seen this before, but here it is. And here's where I'm at. So what I worked on, I finished the jellyfish. J is for jellyfish. And I stitched all the water for this palm tree on a little island, which is um, I for island. And it, the word comes down this way. So um, the way that I love to stitch these, as I've said before, is I like to stitch them one color at a time. And then I'll like document each color. And then once all the colors are done, I take another picture of it. And then I take a final picture once I've completed the back stitch so you can really see how like the back stitch brings everything to life. So this right here is the halfway mark on the pattern. So I am getting there. I will probably pick this up again before our next video. I really am trying to kind of knock it out. Um, we are working so much <laughs> on the alphabet right now in our house. Um, working on letter sounds and um, starting you know to do a lot of phonics work and so having this in their bathroom which is where it is intended to go I feel like would be very beneficial during this time in our lives. The other project that I have been not as um, good about making sure I get stitches in on is Consider the Lilies. So, this is from, um, designed by Beth's Twist of Heartstring Samplery. Consider the Lilies. This was her market release from um, 2020. And it's a companion piece to His Eyes on the Sparrow, which is the exact same size. It focuses more on the animals and less on the plants. And this one focuses more on the plants and less on the animals. And then on Sparrow, like the words are closer to the top, not like that close to the top, but like it, it flip flopped where the larger space on this one is on top of the, of the Bible verse. And then on Sparrow, it's larger below. Um, either way, it's gorgeous. And it is, it's beautiful. It's always beautiful. 
and it's easy to stitch on. So here's where I'm at with the whole thing. And then probably since I have shown this last, I think I did this little guy, this, and then I started on the angel right here. So I haven't gotten a lot of progress on it. I did miss one of my Stitch Lilies on Sunday, Stitch Lilies on Sunday Sal, which I will put the hashtag underneath, is a Sal that I'm doing with Cynthia Brew of Stitching in the Light. And um, she is also stitching on Sunday. There's a couple other people. Um, Celeste Creates is also working on it. Um, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch has been using that hashtag. Um, Socks for Mum, I believe, has been using the hashtag. So there's quite a few people that have joined in on it. So if you are stitching lilies, please join in on the hashtag. Um, oh, Anne. Anne also. Um, I'll put her floss tube. I'm sorry, her Instagram handle down below. I, I, I'm i sorry if I missed you. And I, I know I've been trying to comment on them whenever I see them. Because I just really appreciate it's motivating to see other people post it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to pick that back up. I need to load that into a Q-snap right now so I can get some stuff done on mine. So thank you to everybody else that's participating in that sale. Thank you to Cynthia for co-hosting with me, allowing me to co-host with her. Um, it's, it's great. Um, Cynthia also has another sale coming up and it's a Stitching Pumpkins sale which I will also be participating in. Um, I am stitching Quaker pumpkins, and so I'll be working on that. I also have another pumpkin stitch that is a Thanksgiving one that I need to work on, so I'll do that for that sale as well. I'll put the hashtag for that sale right here. That is for October, I believe, and it is a fundraiser for a It's not the Child Rescue Coalition. It's another group that is helping kids who are victims of uh, sex trafficking and that lifestyle that hurts um, that hurts our children. Um, sex work and sex trafficking are very different. Um, I am not going to get into where I stand on all of that. Obviously sex trafficking, I stand in the, that is unfathomably horrible. Um, it's like a parent's worst nightmare and all of us can just, your heart uh, when that happens and you hear about it. So, um, but yeah, she's, she's got a lot of goodies that were donated by some other designers and cross stitchers and bag makers and things like that. So she's doing, um, a raffle with a raffle ticket with donation to the fundraiser. Okay. So that was my lilies. Um, I've also been working on, oh, say, can you see I'm doing, um, the square one not doing the drum and hands-on design Kathy Haberin and I've been working on this one a little bit not a ton now oh, you need to see that yucky sticker okay so um, I am just pulling flosses from my stash the seaweed is supposed to be two different colors, but I found a variegated enough green to not need to do that. It's a color in cotton. I think it's from a Halloween box because the Halloween, um, the Halloween box because it doesn't have a name on it. And the same thing with that orange, I think, is also perhaps from a Halloween box. The two blues on the top are also color classic color. Nope, color in cotton. And this is a gas. 
but I don't have my conversion handy, sorry. But so far so good. It's, I mean, it's kind of almost done. It was, it was kind of weird to like come around the corner when I usually stitch on such big projects. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh yeah, this isn't going to actually take that long. Although I have been finishing a lot of little stuff lately. I don't typically have it. Oh wait, here's the colors. What color is this? So the beige, it's old though. So like, I don't know if this color even still exists or even looks like this. It's gassed wood smoke. But as you can see from the tag, it's kind of an ancient one. Um, so that is the color that will be the sand in this and also is the words. I'm gonna put this one away, sorry. Kinko, kinko. All right, I'll sew that for you. Tonk. Let's say, can you see? The token. Okay, so this is what I was talking about for my um, stitch on every day of the month thing. Which, by the way, in August, I only missed two days of stitching, which with like all the things that are normally going on in life, I feel like that was like pretty good accomplishment. Um, my attitude was also a lot better last month, so maybe that like stabby stab of the fabric helped with not the stabby stab of people. Um, anyways, <laughs> long story short, too late. Um, long dog samplers, the token. So once. I get one of my log dogs done, I can start another one. So I have two log dogs. One of them's almost done at Bienvenue, which is a birth sampler for my daughter, who's now three. It is what it is. And then this is my wedding slash anniversary sampler for my husband and I that are celebrating our ninth anniversary. It is what it is. Anyways, this is beautiful. I actually bought this pattern when I saw um, Abby Bella stitch. She used to, when she used to film her um, floss tubes, she had like a almost like a clothesline and it had her finishes that weren't yet FFO'd, fully finished objects. I had her finishes like kind of hanging on it and I was like, what is that one? And I asked her and then she said that it, this is what it was. And so I bought it right away and I am stitching it with a Silks For You silk that I unfortunately don't know the number for but it is so pretty and I don't know if you're gonna be able to. Okay, so it's, uh, I, actually that is pretty accurate. So this dark red hangs out around 815 DMC and then the really bright parts are like around like 666, like that Christmas red, that really bright Christmas red. So it's really, really, really pretty and really soft. I very much enjoy working with it. Um, I'm not like, oh my gosh, I'm switching everything I own to silk, but I, I do like stitching with the silk. It is really, really nice. So I, um, a lot of times I'm a bottom up stitcher because of the way I cross my X's. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I go from top right to bottom left and then top left to bottom right. If you stitch like that, you can't go like straight down in a line because your like very first stitch, if you stitch the same way that you stitch every time, you're going to be coming up and like unstitching your last stitch, your last crossover on the X to start your new one. If that doesn't make sense, I'm sorry but that's the best way I think, can think to explain it. So if I stitch from the top down, I like have some tricks that I do to like make sure that I can stitch my next stitch without unstitching my stitch on top of it, which usually involves stitching a different way than I normally stitch or like starting one over and then going back and making sure I do the one underneath. Or like I, sometimes I'll zigzag down letters, um, things like that. It, it just, that's the way that it, ends up working. But if I am doing something that I can start at the bottom and I don't have to worry about weird counting and um, 
don't have to worry about anything like that, I will. So this one is started at the bottom. Um, it is on a 36 count Edinburgh Tyco from Picture This Plus, which is like a white with some gray splotches. And now, oh, I'm gonna have to be careful about how I fold this. It has some red on it from, oh, no, it doesn't. That's that sticker that I was talking about earlier. That was really scary. Thought I had a big stain, but it's just showing through the orange sticker on the back. Okay, so um, when I picked this up September 1st, um, I didn't have any of these done. So I stitched this whole motif, this little guy right here, and I'm past the halfway point on this motif right here. And that's the whole bottom. So I made it all the way across on the bottom. I think this is gonna go a lot faster than I expected. This motif right here was a beast. A beast, a total beast. It has a lot of backstitch in it. Um, and it's just, it's a beast. I mean, you can tell that it's a beast. Look at those colors. That is very accurate. Very, very accurate color representation. So these are the ones I finished. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. So pretty. Okay. So um, I, I'm stitching at least one strand on this every day. I have been putting more in most days because it's lovely and I like to get to like a solidish stopping point that like makes me happy and this was just where I stopped last night and I wasn't gonna not show it to you guys so I actually took it out I did a little press on it because it was super crinkly from being in a q-snap but it um, is not in a q-snap anymore and my silk for it lives in this little um this is from Jen, Delicious Threads. I was like, it's in here, but I can do it without knowing. This is from Jen from Delicious Threads. Um, I don't know if she has bags in her shop right now. I'll post it. She has uh, a laser cat that cuts out really cool needle minders and thread keeps right now. And so I think she's kind of switching to that and it's allowing her to offer more unique needle minders than she had before. I mean, she had great ones before because I love wood needle minders are my favorite. So the ones that she's making right now are again right up my alley so i'm gonna go give her some of my money pretty soon but that's what this little bag is from it's super cute it's christmas bag the reason that i'm using it for this is because the inside is red and so i figured that i didn't want to keep my i didn't want to keep the silk in with the project in case it did like rub and and bleed and the inside of this bag is red and red and vinyl so even if it does bleed it's gonna bleed onto red so it'll be fine nothing bad will happen i don't think okay um i also have put a couple stitches into my tiki beach sunset which let's show you this first is a um Amy Stewart pattern that is charted by Michelle Saeda of Hade, Heaven and Earth Designs. If you are unfamiliar, I have been tracking it in the Pattern Keeper app, which is making my way of stitching move extremely quickly compared to the other ones that I've worked on. Um, and I've said it before, but in case you're new, so the way I stitch a Hade is like I pick a color that's in the first box and then I use it until I run out. Um, I have like pretty much everything in this like loop is done. So I just keep get, picking up a thread like I'll grab probably I'm working on one that's up here that I'm not quite done with. I still have thread on the back of here 
for this. Um, that's going to go fill in a little bit more of this right here. But um, so then like the next one I pick up will be this because it's the closest to that corner coming out. And then I'll just follow it to wherever it goes um, until I run out of that. I don't think, I mean, it, it's the back of a hade. It's not going to be gorgeous. And it's the back of a very, very confetti heavy hade. So it's like really going to be kind of a struggle. But um, I am now, uh, I think the last time I showed it to you, I was at 0.69% done. And now I'm at like 0.81% done. So like I haven't, I probably stitched like 400 more stitches on it since I showed it to you last, which is a lot, but not, especially in the grand scheme of hade. Um, okay, my very last um, whip or work in progress, I don't remember if I said that, um, is Quaker Pumpkins from Liz Matthews. Oh, here is her beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chart. Beautiful chart. Here is my start. I'm stitching this on um, fabric on a whim in cocoa. And that's that's my start on there. And then let me really don't know why this is called cocoa, but that's okay. It's beautiful. And then here, oh yeah, that's a good representation of everything, I think. Here's my color palette for this project. So this right there is uh, Royal Purple from Weeks Dye Works. No, Purple Majesty. Purple Majesty, Royal Purple, same thing, right? This is Paris Green from Weeks Dye Works. This is actually the called for gunmetal. This is also, this blue is Weeks Dye Works, Santa Cruz. This is Classic Color Works Jelly Roll. This is Gast Island Blue. And the last one is Classic Colorworks in Lobster Claw. So that is a great representation of the fabric. Um, <laughs> I keep calling it Murky Light. <laughs> it's like the foofy version of Murky. I don't know, I love it. It's beautiful. The pattern's beautiful. Um, I'm extremely happy to be stitching it and I do need to put in a little bit more, but I think October will be pretty pumpkin heavy for me. All right, let's see. Um, okay. So I have been model stitching for myself and designing for myself. And I <laughs> came up with a Christmas ornament. And then I was like, I can't release a Christmas ornament in, I think it might've even been August at that point. <laughs> I was like, no, it's not time yet. I know the ornament issue of Just Cross Stitch came out already, um, but it, like I said, it just, was, it just wasn't time yet. So, I got to work on a Halloween pattern. I love um, witchy stuff. As you'll see, there's a hole right up there on my little shelf. That's where this goes. Um, so, I present to you witch shoes. Witch shoes? Witch shoes! So, this pattern is stitched on Picture This Plus Haunted in 32 count. When it's stitched on 32 count or 16 count, it will fit in a 5x7 frame. So this is a 5x7 frame. I got it from Amazon. It is a Laura Ashley frame. I will link it below. Um, that will be a Amazon affiliate link. Um, but it was not super cheap, but it's pretty great quality. Um, I did remove the glass to um, frame it with the cross stitch in there. 
And then I did write on my pattern and in the Etsy shop a little note. I'm just going to stand up because it's kind of awkward to hold it like that. So the socks are, again, Purple Majesty. And then this is um, Weak Star Works Absinthe. And then this is Weak Star Works Turkish Red and then DMC Blanc. And then um, the words and the shoes are all just stitched in DMC 310. But like this takes like one strand of, or like one, like two stranded section of floss. So it's like a great opportunity to use up something that you didn't know if you were going to use or that you have one strand of left and you're like, I don't know what else I'm going to use that for, but this is like really beautiful fancy floss. Um, these socks are like a great thing. You can really make these your own. You can change the um, fabric. One of my friends, Patty, she is stitching it on like a light green and she used the regular 310 for the words but she's using um, a toile for the shoes and then she's using um Krynik for the socks and you could even so the each sock stripe is two um stitches tall you could even make them a single stitch tall and have even more stripes in them you could make them multicolored stripes you could give them rainbow stripe socks um, it's just such a awesome like teeny tiny way to use a little bit of extra fun i mean you can change every all the colors of everything but i just think that that's such like a unique not a unique opportunity it's not unique it's such a great opportunity to just use that like one strand of something you have laying around that you didn't know what you were going to get to put it in or like if you have a floss card that's really running low or you have a floss card from a kit that has a cool color on it that you can't you're done with the kit and you can't put it back into anything because you don't actually know what color it is perfect perfect or like dinky dyes like random strings i think color and cotton she would give you like one strand she was doing that for a while where you could buy like single strands all put together that she just had like they were extras. This would be a great project to use those up in too. So this is available in my Etsy shop. I'm going to link, um, I'm going to link straight to this pattern. Usually I just have a link for my shop in its entirety below, but I'm going to link straight to this pattern. I'll put a link for the frame in there. So yeah, so this frame is from, it's from Amazon. I'll link that below. Um, and I, I love this guy. So I'm going to stick it back on my shelf where it goes. There we go. <sighs> okay. Who else do I have for you? Okay. So giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. I... Okay, so I have two of them. I didn't just like make a photocopy. Here's my pattern. Here's the pattern I'm giving away. Um, I am giving away a copy of Quaker Pumpkins from Liz Matthews. I'm also giving away a $25 gift card to Keepsakes because that is the shop that really helped me kit up this project um, within my vision. So we're gonna use the uh, handy dandy um, YouTube comment picker so it's all loaded ready to go um, get YouTube comments 31 people um, mentioned fall in their comment which is what I asked for to be able to win Do -do 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 -do. and Elena B. Elena B. Elena B. You are the winner. Congratulations. If you can contact me, I'm going to comment on your comment after I get this all posted. If you can comment, contact me at MKissa Creations on Instagram, I would appreciate that. If you can't, reply to my comment under your comment with your email address and I will shoot you an email and then we can work out all your, um, all your goodies. 
um, because the pattern's gonna be coming from me, the gift card's gonna be coming straight from Keepsakes. So I just wanna make sure that I get everything right and get that to you, and yeah. Okay, so September plans. My September plans are to work on my long dog and whatever else calls to me. I've been really, one, I find that once I sit down and start putting stitches in, then I'm like, oh, okay, oh this, oh that, oh this, oh that. And I have been pretty good about not starting anything new right now, but it's gonna change and I'm gonna tell you in a second. Um, I've been pretty good about not starting new things, but, and working on and putting stitches into things that I already have going. I have a couple more things that I want to knock off. I really would like to get, I want to finish one of my big projects. None of them are really close except for Bienvenue, but I kind of like, I don't know, bleh, out on it in May. And then now that I'm already stitching on Log Dog, which is all on the token, it's, it's similar. They're both Quaker style samplers from long dog so like they're not the same but it has that same feel when i'm stitching on it i was telling the ladies in my stitching group that i was like no i'm not into stitching on my I'm not into stitching on my haid right now and then i like put it in the q snap like two days later because i was like oh i want to see my haid grow so i could tell you plans right now but i mean i feel like pretty collectively we all know what happens when floss tubers tell you what their plans are it just it, that doesn't it doesn't happen the way that you expect it to happen so um that's that for my haul i don't have a picture yet because i didn't print it out but i bought lindy stitches new dracula pattern because it's adorable i cannot wait to start it i have to place an order for the dinky dye silk that it needs and then i also need actually i want to tell you really quick before okay so on the log dog sampler it's all in red my wedding colors which i've said before are my, like my favorite color combination red and aqua um with accents of like bright purple like 550 purple um or deep purple i don't know if that's bright purple jewel tone purple um so what i think i'm gonna do i need to find some silks so i'm gonna when i place my order for that dinky dye silk i want to find someone that does other dinky dye silk so i think that i'm gonna do this one i can't decide if i'm gonna do the part around it in red and then the middle in aqua or the part around the initials in aqua and then the middle part in red and then i also i think want to um do a little something on the date we got married on a super cool date um so it's not as cool in the uk or i think anywhere else for that matter but here in the states we got married on september 10th in 2011 which is 9 10 11 which is obviously numerical order date um but like i said in other places that would be 10 9 11 so not as cool um but so we got married on 9 10 11 which also is in roman numerals a palindrome i x x x i which means it reads the same forwards and backwards and an ambigram which means it reads the same right side up and upside down so um our wedding day it's super cool <laughs> so i want to make sure that like i capture the super coolness of it and then also can like make it i don't know exciting so they have roman numerals but they're like baby roman numerals and i think she's from or she's french so yeah, so all of Europe does their, like, I, this is probably the same thing as us being, like, on Fahrenheit and not the metric system, because why would we want to do things in an easy way like everyone else? Let's be different. Anyways, so I'm going to change that. So I need to order Dinky Dye Silks. 
I need to order dinky dye silks in those two colors, and then I also need to order the dinky dye silks for Lindy Stitch's Dracula pattern because her bat is charred in dinky dyes. I also have this piece, which I need to check the count of, of Murky. This is like literally how big it is though. She says that that pattern will fit in an 8x10 frame. So this could quite possibly be stitched with like zero border in hand and then get mushed into a frame and be just fine, which is what I might actually do. Um, might actually get a, see if they have that Laura Ashley frame in an 8x10 and buy the same thing because then it could be like one of my Halloween pieces. And but anyway, so I have this piece of murky, which may or not be like perfectly sized for it or not. We'll see. Um, but it's not gonna have much of a border because I think it is 32 count. And then we can like cross our fingers on like that it maybe shrunk a little bit count wise. I don't think it's 38 or 36. It could be 36, which would make me happy because then I might be able to get away with stitching one over two. It's so... <laughs> I'm very frugal when it comes to fancy floss, and I hate... <laughs> I don't hate. I just like stitching it with two threads, because it just, like, eat. Oh my gosh, like a skein of weak style works is, like, gone. You're like, but I just... Okay. <laughs> so, I am hopeful... But I, it's okay if I have to buy all new skeins for that project. I'm going to stitch that one as charted. Um, I think she did an amazing job, and I love the fall leaves. Also, though, her fall leaf, it looks like the Allagash leaf, which then makes me, like, happy and think of Maine. Let me show you. I have Allagash leaf somewhere. Hold on. Okay, so... My floss box is covered in um, brewery, brewery stickers from everywhere. Especially like when we drove cross country, we stopped at like a lot of breweries or brewery restaurants. But okay, so Allagash is a brewery in Maine and that's like their little leaf right there. And her leaves from the Dracula pattern remind me of that. And so then I'm like, oh, it's Maine Dracula. I'm a dork. All right, I forgot a main thing last week, and I, I didn't really plan one for this week, but Allagash made me think of it. So, coming from California, there's a beer from, is it from Oregon? Or is it from, no, it's from California. I think it's from, it's from the Russian River Valley, which also home to great Pinot Noirs. Um, but it is called Pliny the Elder. And it's like one of those beers that... They do like really limited, they do small batches and then like limited releases. And so like people would like line up around the corner from like breweries that were gonna have it um, on special. So Pliny the Elder and then Pliny the Younger was like even more like sought after and fancy and weird. Not weird, weird's the wrong word. Sought after and fancy and rare. Um, and but like even getting Pliny the Elder, it's more available now, but it, you were still like, oh my gosh, if you showed up at a, at a restaurant and they actually like had it, you kind of were like, I scored. And then the Pliny the Younger was the one that like would start having lines. But originally Pliny the Elder was that. Well, somebody posted it and I, I don't remember where it's at, but it was like a, um, the best craft brews in the United States. And... Main beer company makes a beer called Lunch. They also make a beer called Dinner. They also make a beer called Second Dinner or Second Lunch. It can get confusing when you're saying that you would like a lunch for dinner or dinner for lunch. Anyways, it makes it funny. They also have a beer named Zoe, which I think is named after a dog. But we have a Zoe, a little Zoe, and that beer is actually pretty good. I digress. The point of this, art this article, this beer chat that you're getting is that main beer company's lunch beat out Pliny the Elder on like best craft brews and I was like damn straight it did I can pick that up at my grocery store for all my beer drinking friends that know about Pliny the Elder you can't usually pick it up at the grocery store I don't think 
You might be able to now, but you didn't used to be able to. But I can get Maine Beer Company lunch whenever I want. I love Maine. <laughs> um, I think that's all I have for you. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe, share. Um, if you are interested in the witch shoes pattern, there is a link down below. And I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.